everybody. I'm here with my little angel girl, and I'm gonna let her go because she's precious. Anyway, I just wanted everybody to see her because she's uh, I love her so much. My name is Sylvia. I am a special needs mom. My son, Nikki, is 24 years old, and he has the recessive dystrophic form of epidermolysis bullosa. I know that's a mouthful. And uh, I've written a few books as well. And so I wanted, uh, with my channel, I wanted to help uh, not only uh, special need parents, but also wanted to help other people help special need parents. And so that's what the um, topic of it is today, is five ways that you can help a special need parent. And actually, I take that right from my book, Butterfly Child. At the end of the book, I have different resources, different things. And uh, one of the things is, and I'll show you as soon as I get to the page, <clears throat> how to help EB parents. And then I have some resources as well. And then I also have, of course I lost the page already. That's so beautiful. All right, how to help bereaved parents. And I have that because I had a baby that was still born at full term and that was just uh, something that you cannot really understand until you've been through it. And I, I put little tips and hints on how to help them because this is not something that a lot of people really know um, how to how to help people, how, how to help these parents. But today I want to talk about how to help special need parents and I have five main things. So I'm going to start with the one and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to actually, um, she was under my feet. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit more info on that. So here we go. Number one, many parents feel isolated from the world themselves, their families, and their friends. Reach out to them and let them know they're not alone. Check in with them every now and again. Ask them how they're doing and how their child is. Uh, listen, offer kind words. Knowing that someone cares is really important and the simple fact cannot be understated, overstated. Something as quick as sending an email or text, uh, let them know you're thinking about them could help them find the strength to keep moving on a really bad day. Now, when Nikki was little, um, I had many, many, many bad days because this was new to me. I never heard of this disorder even existed before he was born. Um, uh, and so I felt as alone as humanly possible. All my friends that were pregnant with me all had healthy babies. And so I could not even share anything with them because... They didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do. Um, and I'm sure this is true for many other uh, conditions, not just DB. Um, uh, there's also the fact that my family was uh, across the ocean. My family lives in Italy. And so that was that. Uh, my ex-husband's family lived out of state. Um, so it's not like they could help either. Um, and uh, I was just alone. Um in every sense of the word, I was alone. My friends just kind of like one by one dissipated. I was becoming really a mean person. And I think that's why a lot of uh, people, moms, and initially especially with special need children, become so angry with the world, um, become really shy, not shy, shy, but shy in the sense that they keep everything to themselves. It's because they have nobody to talk to. Now, nowadays, with the advent of the internet, um, you're able to find these other rare parents. But when Nikki was born, there was, this is 1996. Yeah, the internet existed, but to find another parent of an EB child uh, that was just, you know, I think I found one and then I found another one, I mean, months later. I um, mean, you know, it was just a rare thing. So if you can help him, send him a text, hey, how everything's going. It doesn't need to be anything elaborate, you know. Just let them know, hey, I'm thinking of you. That means everything to them. All right, so number two, if you live close by, go visit them. Please don't start avoiding them, too. It's hard to get out with a special need child. 
with a special need child sometimes, and your friend is probably extremely lonely. And that is very true. Um, I really felt abandoned by everybody. It's not like people would come over and give me, oh, here's this lasagna for you. <laughs> you know, what? nothing. I had nothing. Uh, and so the resentment starts to build, you know, when when you need people the most they abandon you. That's not a nice place to be. And so just if you live close by, just, hey, do you need milk? Hey, you know, text them. Hey, I was going to the store. Do you need bread? You know, do, what do you need? You know, anything just very simple. It's very simple. Um, but in the society, we're not taught to care so deeply about others like that. I mean, I came from a country who that does. Um, I grew up in Italy, and it's the way people um, treat one another is very different. Here, if you don't have cl people close, family nearby, it's, it's, it's hard. It's really hard, especially when you have a child with special needs. So just remember that, okay? That would be awesome. Three. If you have extra time, do something for them. Don't ask what you can do for them. They won't tell you. Bring dinner, mow the lawn, help clean the house, run errands for them, anything, really, really anything. Just text and say, hey, I'm going to the post office. Do you need stamps? You know, anything, anything at all. Just put your thinking cap on. Like, you know, I'm going to the mall today. I wonder if she needs a new lipstick. I mean, it could be anything, any small thing to let them know you care. And that mom won't become resentful as, as I probably did. I, when, gosh, when Nikki was small, I was just, you wouldn't want to be around me. I was just beside myself because shortly after we had to have a bankruptcy and then um, I got divorced and I was alone and I was working all the time and Nikki was going, I mean, it's all in the book. It's all in the book. Um, helping people is so important. So do that. And uh, number four, this is important, support their cause. Whatever the diagnosis, learn about it. And please don't compare your friend, friend's child to another who is doing better or worse. Every patient is different. Don't be afraid to ask specific questions that can help educate you. Knowing that you took the time to learn about the child's condition would mean a great deal to any special need parent. So in this instance, I had two people who really helped me out in this case when Nikki was born. One of them, one, one, one was my um, ex-husband's co-worker. She called me at the hospital when Nikki was born and like, okay you need to make sure they pop the blisters. You need to make sure, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, I researched it for you. That was just unbelievable, amazing. And then the other one was my cousin, Mary. She works in the medical field. And so she was, she, we had a long talks on the phone. I mean, she, um, she is one of those people that I wish we lived closer because we would be best friends. She lived on the East Coast. She's lived on the East Coast since forever for four years and so um but we we talk on the phone um and she really helped me okay use satin sheets because they're really softer she she gave me all kinds of hints about that kind of stuff and so that meant a lot that means a lot more than you might think especially for new parents for new parents that's amazing and if it's not a new parent let's say um you're a dear friend on facebook and they post something about the condition read Re, reshare it, retweet, re, you know, re Instagram or put them on your stories. I mean, and just share the word about the disorder, especially if it's something really rare like EB. Um, we need awareness. We need because with awareness comes funding, um, and funding comes you know cure. That's how you pay for a cure, with with uh, with funding. So, I mean, you have to remember that. We came with a close uh, a vaccine for COVID in a year, and we've been looking for a cure for EB for how long now? You know, if it's all because of the money. So think about that, money. It's always the answer, money, isn't it? Unfortunately. And number five, please know and understand that special need parents are often tired, 
scared of the future, can be jealous, are often very lonely, but they're always fiercely human. Sorry, I had a little incident there with the mouse. Nobody's perfect. Some parents have been challenged and pushed beyond their limits. While their life is now centered on their child, they still have dreams and aspirations of their own. Please be patient with them. And I think that's probably the most important thing to know because I had to abandon my career um, when Nikki was born. And I don't regret it. I don't. But it was hard at first to think that, okay, well, maybe it'll just be for now. And it's been 24 years. Um, and I, I went to college. I tried to do things for myself, but it's not always easy. And I, I couldn't have a full-time job if I wanted one. Um, just recently, we've had issue with the, with the bandages. My son has a condition where his, 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 um, his skin is really fragile and it just peels off like wet tissue paper. And, um, it's, he has to be bandaged, uh, because it's kind of like a burn, it's kind of like a burn patient. Uh, and so the, that's what the reason why for our two bankruptcies were the insurance wouldn't pay for bandages. We always had insurance, by the way, always, we always paid and uh, they wouldn't pay for the bandages. But then in 2009, um, there was a company that got involved to help EB families and we were able to get our bandages covered by them, by the insurance. But then just recently the insurance decided, um, ah, we don't want to pay it anymore. And so they stopped paying for it. Um, I want to thank everybody that sent us um, bandages or who sent us money to buy to buy bandages. This stuff is really expensive. And right now there's a dispute um, with the um, insurance wanting to medical group to pay, medical group saying, we never paid for the stuff. It's your responsibility. And the um, insurance might pay just because I got the news involved. And so, but then what about moving forward? What was going to happen with that? And so that's really, it never ends. It really never ends. So just know that you know, we try to keep it together and we try to be positive and have hope for the future, a cure is coming, whatever, but there are days where all we want to do is just, just stay in bed all day. And I, I've been wanting to do that, but I can't because I have to take care of Nikki, you know. And so there's a lot involved in this kind of stuff. I mean, I just received, uh, finally, some referrals for... Um, for things that Nikki needs, for his dermatologist, for his uh, hand surgeon, for his G2 supplies. And so I was spent all day calling people and I wasn't even done. Now I have to, as soon as I'm done with this call, I gotta go call more people. But anyway, I blabbed enough. I wanna thank you for uh, watching this far. And I forgot to mention my mug of the day. This is my sister's mug. And it says, um, sisters forever, never apart maybe in, dif in distance, but never at heart. And then I have me, I'm in the middle, I'm the middle sister. And then I have my younger sister, Katya. She has brown hair. I'm a bleach, be bleached blonde. I love my blonde hair. And then I have my older sister who's all white and short hair. She's the tomboy of the family. So anyway, that's, that's my mug of the day. And of course I normally have wear a EB shirt, but it was just Valentine's day, so. Just I'm sending hearts to everybody. So thank you for watching. If you've subscribed already, thank you. If you haven't, please subscribe for uh, new videos. I posted one just recently that talked about our issues with the bandages. If you want to go see that, uh, press like if you would. And uh, um, turn on the bell so you'll notified next time there's a video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.